Welcome to WorshipTutorials.com. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. I built a pedal board. Uh, it's kind of significant for me because I have not actually had like a fully functioning board uh, that I used, you know, to play songs in church for it's got to be like seven or eight years. Uh, so for the past, you know, basically, well, it was HD 500X before that, but since the Helix was was announced. That's pretty much what I've used, either Helix or an Axe FX, just an all-in-one solution, which I love. But for a long time, I've been wanting to put, I, I spend too much time with Bradford Mitchell. So uh, seeing the board that he, you know, the boards that he uses, um, it's just a lot of fun. So I've wanted to put something together for a long time. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the Brian Wall Worship Tutorials pedal board. I'm gonna walk through all the pedals that are on here. I'm gonna talk about the board itself, the cabling, the power, uh, how I'm controlling everything as far as MIDI and stuff goes. There are timestamps all across the bottom of this video where you can jump to playing samples, where you can jump to the individual pedals, uh, where you can jump to like talking about the board itself and the cabling and the power and the MIDI control all that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna kind of methodically go through everything, show you what it's doing, what it sounds like, uh, and if you are interested in the Morningstar uh, MIDI controller stuff, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I'm using it in this video, but I'm gonna make a separate video that goes way more in depth with uh, the, the MC8, and there's an ML5 underneath, which you'll see. Okay, so before we get started, I have a huge thank you to say to a few uh, people and companies. Um, nobody is paying me to make this video, so this is not a sponsored video, and that way I'm not making money from this, but there are some people who gave me some things to put on here uh, in exchange for uh, being on this video. But I will say this, I, hand I reached out to them. They didn't reach out to me, so this is stuff that I wanted on this board. So first of all, uh, John over at Creation and Fox Pedal. Uh, the board is Creation, I'll talk about that in a sec. All the I.O. for the board is by Creation. Almost all the cabling is from Creation as well. And this pedal topper is uh, Creation. I want to say a big thank you to Eventide. I, I reached, I love Eventide. When I used to run boards, I had Eventide stuff on them. I've always loved it. So I reached out to Eventide. Uh, a mutual friend connected us. And they sent the, uh, the Black Hole, the Micro Pitch, and the H9. And thank you to uh, Morningstar for the MC8 and the ML5. Again, it was the controller that I wanted to use for this board. And then um, this one, the Golden from Universal Audio, I wasn't expecting that. We did a, a demo for UA for their, uh, their three pedals, the Golden, the Starlight, and the Astra, and they liked the video. So they said, hey, we wanna send you as a gift, we wanna send you some pedals. So I put the Golden on here, cause it is, I'll say it, I'll say it then and I'll say it now, it's the best pedal reverb I've ever heard in my entire life.
so the pedal board itself is uh, the Elevation Series V2 from Creation. I really love this thing. I love like the wood accents on the sides of it. I think it looks really classy. Super lightweight, which is nice, but yet it's there's a lot of hardware on here and underneath it, and it is supporting everything uh, great. It's rock solid. Um, tons of options for cable routing and management with Creation. So uh, really, really love the Creation board. Um, and so thank you, John, from Creation for, uh, for letting me use this thing on this board. It's an honor to do it. So there are two patch bays built into this board. You notice there are some cables going in and out on either side. So uh, it's called the Elevation Series Patch Bay. It's four pass-throughs mono TRS. I think they might be TRS or TS. Uh, I'll put that in the bottom as well, what exactly they are. I've got basically my input on this side and stereo output on that side. So I'm running two of those patch bays. I've got something special going on over here that I'll talk about when I kind of talk about signal routing. And then I have their power module on uh, this side as well. So you can just run power into the side of the board and then it has an on off switch, super handy. And then it lets all the cable management and routing happen underneath. So speaking of cables, all almost all of the cables on this board are uh, from Creation as well. It is their solderless kit that they have available. They were really easy to make and I bought a cable, uh, like a cable checker thing just to make sure that all of my cables were good before I committed to putting them uh, to putting them in. I've used solderless cables before from other companies. I can't remember exactly which one. A friend of mine had a bunch and he gave them to me. And so I built some from that kit and they weren't as consistent. And I really like as well from Creation, two things I really love about the cables that I use from them. One is the actual cable itself. It's really uh, low profile, really thin and sort of pliable. So it's not thick and it doesn't sort of get in the way and it's easy to maneuver around. And the plugs on the ends of the cables are super low profile. Um, I really like the design of them as well, the little, you know, the Creation logo on the ends of all the cables. I'm using some MIDI cables and I'll just put it in the description down below which cables they are. Now to power the board itself, I bought my first Strymon uh, pedal ever. I know Strymon is a big, you know, praise and worship thing, but uh, I've actually never owned Strymon anything. Uh, like I said, I've been an Eventide guy for a long time, but I am using the Strymon Ohi and the Strymon Zuma together, and that supplies power to this entire thing. I actually still have one power outlet available to me um, that I could run another one of the UA pedals, for example. But the other thing is, for a little while, in place of where the Golden is up there, I did have an HX Stomp up there, and I was able to uh, take two of the plugs from one of the Strymon pedal supplies and run it and power the Stomp in place of the Golden with everything else on this board uh, just from those two power supplies. So really impressed with them. And I've got 18 volts going to these two pedals as well. So, you know, super versatile as far as what you can do with the Strymon power stuff. Really love them, recommend them. I know there's a lot of other great power options out there, but the Strymon ones are the ones I decided to go with. <laughs> Let's start talking about signal flow and the pedals that we're using. So the, the signal comes into the board here. Actually, the first thing that we hit is the volume pedal 
here. Uh, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people like to run volume after the drive section. Uh, I do that like when we build patches and things like that. But for this thing, uh, I've always just kind of, whenever I've had pedal boards in the past, the volume's been the first thing. This is a Dunlop Volume X. Creation made me this sort of monogrammed wood pedal topper. I love it. I think it looks great. They can do it for you and do it with whatever design that you want. So we hit the, the volume pedal first. The next place we go is there's, I'm using the tuner out to the Korg uh, Pitch Black Mini. So, you know, the tuner is always on. So I can pull back on the volume if I want. It's not muting anything, but also like if I'm playing swells or something like that, you know, before I push the, the volume down, if I'm playing a note like I'm in D, okay, that's a D, that's nice. I can, I can, you know, come in with it. I like having that sort of as a secondary use for me for a tuner. And I've always liked the Chord Pitch Black. It was the tuner I used back when I uh, had a pedal board before in a previous life. So I like the display on it. It's really easy to see and it's fast and accurate. The next thing we hit is the compressor. So this is the Empress Compressor Mark II. This is an 1170 st 1176 style compressor, which I love that style of compression. Uh, you can make it really squishy or you can make it kind of transparent, which, like, which is what I'm doing. I run it right in the middle, like a four to one compression and I'm kind of blended. So it acts sort of as a, uh, as a parallel comp in that regard. And uh, the tone, one thing I love about this compressor is you can use it to sort of adjust for different guitars and uh, different types of pickups and outputs. So you can use this tone control to brighten things up or darken things. And then you can use the in and the out levels to sort of push the amps back and forth uh, however you would like. So I'm gonna play you sort of just the clean tone without the compressor on. For the purpose of this uh, video, I am running into a quad cortex with two captures one of our 2001 Korg Vox AC30 Top Boost, the other of a Mashless Laurel Canyon, which I picked up recently. On the bridge pickup, this is what it sounds like clean. <laughs> So you can see that when you turn the compressor on, the way I'm using it, I'm pushing those amps a little harder. Uh, those are pretty clean captures of those amps. And I like to get a little bit of breakup on the bridge pickup. So that's how I'm running it. If I wanted to drive the amps less, simply just pull back on that output level and you've got it. From there, we hit the drive section. So the first thing is, I would say, one of two sleepers on this board is the Basic Audio Scarab Deluxe. I'm gonna turn uh, a little bit of reverb on just to demonstrate these drives. But uh, the signal flow goes like this. The Scarab, the King of Tone, the Duelist. And the levels of gain, King of Tone is sort of the lowest level with the yellow side. Uh, this is the this is actually Bradford's old King of Tone. He gave it to me, thank you Bradford, uh, <laughs> as a gift. It's quite a gift. Um, this is the high gain side, so if I want a lot of gain I can hit it here, but mostly what I do is I run this yellow side sort of a lower gain thing. Then we hit the Duelist, which is a uh, blues breaker on this side and a tube screamer on this side. And this blues breaker sounds different than this blues breakery thing, which sounds different than this one as well. So all three of these have a different tone to them. The 808 side, the tube screamer side, is sort of my go-to big drive sound. And then the Scarab, which is actually in the chain before these other two, is a fuzz slash distortion thing. I'll let you hear it. It sounds pretty awesome. Uh, usually you want to hit fuzz before you hit anything else, but this thing behaves pretty well after like volume and compression. Um, I'll show you what they sound like. So clean tone, then I'm just going to turn on the king of tone, then I'll turn on either side. I'll turn on either side of the duelist and I'll show you the scarab. <laughs> So the way I like to stack these things, so this is kind of like 
drive one sound, this is like drive two sound, this would be big huge drive sound, or if I want to kind of really take it over the top, I'll stack this Tube Screamer side with either this side or this side. So I'll show you that. <laughs> see it's like you get a lot of different flavors of drive and then the fuzz is just a totally different kind of a thing uh, to just kind of go nuts if you want to uh, with that so that is my drive section I feel like I could probably get way more flavors and levels of gain and drive that I actually need but drive pedals are a whole lot of fun okay so talking about signal chain before we move on to everything else on this board uh, you might notice like a little purple cable that's sticking out over here. So what happens after the Duelist, which is the last drive before it hits the, the DD500, is uh, I'm using two of the outputs of this patch bay. And so I basically just have a loop over here. And if I want to, I can throw any other drive type of a pedal uh, in right here in the chain. So if I want to try out something new or just see how something else sounds in this board drive wise, I can just plug it in right here on the side and it doesn't mess with anything else on the board. It comes after these three. And then we hit the Boss DD500. So I said the Scarab is the first sleeper on this board. I think the DD500 is sleeper number two. I got it because one, Bradford owns all the delays that there are that I've ever heard of, it feels like. That's not true, but it kind of seems that way. He owns the timeline, he has the Empress delay, he has uh, pretty much all the big player delays that are out there that, that are on the Praise and Worship boards. Uh, one delay he's never had is the Boss DD500. Uh, a lot of the choices I made on this board were based on the things that I used to use on boards that I loved. One of those was the Boss DD-20. And the DD-500 is sort of Boss's evolution of the DD-20. And I have to say, I love the DD-500. It is awesome. I would love to do, and I probably will do this, um, a dedicated video just on this delay. It's become one of my all-time favorite delay pedals that I've ever used. The sounds that are in it are so good. The editability and tweakability of it is really, really great. Um, and the usability of it is really good too. So it's very, very easy to use and versatile. Uh, the way you can set it up, you can set it up that you know, one delay is here and one is here and you can have them both on at the same time. I'm gonna show you a few of the sounds that I've got set up on this thing. So uh, this is just a quarter note delay and I'm controlling it with the uh, MC8. I'll talk about that in a bit, but here's a quarter note. So that quarter note is a tape note delay. Um, I have the, a dotted eighth set up. It's also a tape delay. And I feel like this, I think I gave this one just a little more character. It's got that like old kind of gross tape thing going on. Gross in like the best way possible. Um, so that's uh, my dotted eighth delay. I have a dual delay set up with quarter and dotted eighth. And you can change, you can go in here. I'm just gonna look, just so I can tell you. Uh, so the first delay is set as a analog delay. And the second delay is also set analog. So they're both analog delays in this dual delay configuration. But you can change them. So the delay one can be a tape, delay two can be a memory man something like that. So these are both set to be analog uh, and it's quarter and dotted eighth. So. And they're in stereo like that. So they sort of ping pong. You can change that as well. Uh, just custom ability on this thing is off the charts. Mm. So good. 
All right, so one last thing I'm using the DD500 for is this algorithm they call Terra Delay. I'll just play it for you so you can hear what it does. It's really cool. You might think, like, what would you use that for? I use it for swells. Uh, I use it too, like, if you just play kind of ambient-ish stuff underneath it, it almost acts like a reverb that just kind of swirls and moves around. I'll just play a little something so you can hear it. So there you, you didn't hear like through the whole thing. It just kind of like just forms this like bed underneath what you play. Uh, it sounds really neat. It's great for ambient stuff if you don't want like, you know, really syncopated type of bump, ba dum bump, ba dum bump, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a cool sound and it's very unique. I don't know of any other delays that have something like that. Okay, so the next thing that we hit from the delay is the Eventide H9. Now, if you know the H9, uh, H9 has been around for years and years. It's sort of even tides everything in a single pedal type of a thing. This is a max, so it has like all of the even tide algorithms are in this pedal. So it can do pretty much anything. Uh, it can do everything this pedal can do and everything this pedal can do, but it only does one algorithm at a time. So you have access to their entire library of sounds, but only one at a time. So. I'm using it for uh, mostly modulation and some shimmer. So the first type of thing I've got is um, this chorus. It's a tri-chorus sound. Sounds like this. The 80s have arrived, okay? That's the chorus sound I'm using. Uh, I have a couple tremolos uh, dialed in as presets. Here's one. Okay, another chorus sound that I have in here, this is like a CE1, a 70s chorus, like from a boss, uh, like a vintage CE1. And uh, let's see, I have this tremolo, I call it a pulse tremolo. It's a little different than the last one, it has kind of like it's got a tremolo thing, but it also has sort of another kind of LFO type of a movement underneath it. Do you hear that? It's like wah, 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 wah. It's kind of like almost like a delay inside of it. Uh, it's really neat sounding. And then the last thing, probably my favorite, one of my favorite things even Tide does, uh, kind of until I discovered the micro pitch maybe, is Shimmer. This is how I'm using Shimmer. I could just play that all day. I love uh, Eventide's Shimmer. Not that many pedals, in my opinion, do Shimmer well. Actually, speaking of the, I'm pointing over here because the quad cortex is over there. Speaking of uh, Shimmer, uh, Neural just put Shimmer in the quad cortex as an algorithm, and it sounds really good. So, um, yeah, but I'm using it from the H9. Now, from the H9, we go to the micro pitch. So, uh, the micro pitch, if you don't know micro pitch, I might do another dedicated video, I think I will, on the micro pitch because. Uh, it wasn't on my radar. Um, I've actually owned an H9 before, uh, and you know all of the uh, algorithms from the micro pitch are in the H9. It's like the harmonizer stuff. Um, it's awesome though. I'm so glad that I have it as a dedicated pedal because I feel like I discovered it, even though I didn't discover it. Uh, it's famously the effect that Van Halen used. Uh, for all of those really super wide sort of 80s rock tones. So what it is, it's a dual delay pedal with pitch also on each delay. So um, the classic use of it is sort of like this micro pitched detuned kind of a sound. It sounds like a chorus, but it's different. Actually, um, to demonstrate that, I'm gonna play 
I'll turn on my my fav my number one setting on the micro pitch and then compare it to this trichorus sound from the H9. So first the micro pitch, then the H9. sounds a little different because of the delays that it has in it. Uh, it, um, it. It has a different sort of a texture and depth to it. It just makes everything like really wide sounding as well. It sounds really cool with gain. Let me just put some gain on and you can hear that. So the micro pitch is on. <laughs> So if I could play Van Halen, you know, guitar stuff, it would have that sort of a sound. That's where he gets it. So that's not the only party trick I use the uh, the micro pitch for. It does, I, this was just preset number three. It does like this really, really cool uh, delay meets reverb kind of a thing. I call it uh, micro pitch ambi. So it pops into preset three. I'm gonna do like a little swell for you so you can hear this, it's awesome. That's good. That's just a lot of delays if you, you know, if you just hear it. To me, that gets a really, really awesome reverb almost sound, but it's great for swells or just any kind of ambient thing that you want to throw into it. It has a little bit of pitch detuning going on. It kind of gives it, it's not like chorus. Uh, it just gives it a little something. So micro pitch, awesome pedal. Uh, like if you want that big wide 80s rhythm tone, that is, that's not just the pedal to get it. That is the thing that they used to get that sound. Okay, from the micro pitch, we come to uh, the black hole, which is also again in the H9, but the black hole from Eventide, this huge ambient reverb. I'm using black hole for two sounds. I call one of them black hole, and it's just this big ambient reverb. So I'll play you like a dry tone and turn it on. <laughs> so much character it's like it kind of moves around it has a feature on it called gravity I'm just gonna play with that because you can turn it like negative like anti-gravity it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy <laughs> So Black Hole, it has a ton of sounds in it. Uh, if you just kind of go through the presets on this pedal, you'll see that there's a lot of versatility for these big, huge uh, ambient reverbs. So I have another uh, preset that I've got on the Black Hole. It is, I call it Black Hole Plus. It's just kind of like the first one, but just bigger. Uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> Love it. 
There's like some modulation in it. It's cool. Um, but that brings us to the last pedal on the board, the final thing in the chain, and that is the UA Golden. So we did a review on all the UA pedals, all three of them. The Golden got its own video. I will link to that below. Uh, I said it in the beginning, I'll say it again. It's the best pedal, like, all around reverb uh, I think I've ever heard. So I have two settings. This is not a MIDI-enabled pe pedal. So it's just, this is setting number one, and this is setting number two. So I have, like, your basic uh, plate reverb, I believe. That's like the big hall with some modulation on it. So you can hear I, what I did there was I went between the golden, the big setting on the golden, and the black hole and uh, they're slightly different. So it kind of gives you different flavors. I actually have one of Eventide's Mod Echo Verb uh, presets dialed in. Let's just find it. I think it's number two, yes, number two. Mod Echo Verb, sounds like this. I'll turn the golden off. Yet another flavor of ambient reverb. I kind of have ambient reverb here, ambient reverb here, ambient reverb here, and here. So, you know, options are limitless with this setup. All right, let's hear some more sounds. about MIDI control, how I'm controlling everything on this board. You might notice so far, you've probably noticed that I've been using the MC8 to pretty much control all of this, 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 and this. You can do all kinds of things with it. I have two basic pages that I have. This one is called board control. So it's basically set up just to turn on and off different presets in the DD500 the H9, the micro pitch, and the black hole, which you have seen me do so far. I have set up two pages, so each bank has basically two pages. So you have eight and then eight again in the same bank. Uh, so, you know, I've got uh, tap tempo, you know, one, two, three, four settings on four presets from the DD500. I've got, I think, one, two, you know, three from the H9, two from the micro pitch, and two from the black hole that I'm accessing from here. But then I have a preset on here, this button right here. So in bank two, or page two of bank one rather, I have this swells button. So swells, if I press it, it changes this, all 
four of these pedals. So I've got the Terra Echo here. I've got the Shimmer here. I've got that really ambient uh, delay micro pitch thing here. And then I've got the big black hole setting uh, on the black hole. And I don't, you know, golden can be on or off. It doesn't matter because the level of verb on this is just enormous. Check this out. And then the way I have this, this bank set up, if I press, all of these are, are two button press settings. So if I press it again, it turns all that stuff off. So I can go instantly to swells and then turn it off. That is how like the basic, if I just wanna like engage with different pedals, that's how I've got that set up. Now the trick, I told you there was something special with these drives. The special thing is the Morningstar ML5. It is a MIDI controlled looper. All of these drive pedals go through it. So it acts like just a looper, on off looper, but it's MIDI controlled so you can control it with the MC8, which is really cool. I'll show you some sounds from that in a bit. On this bank, what I have it set to do is all of the loops are on. So then I'm just turning pedals on and off as you would if they were just wired straight through. So, you know, like right now, they're all the loops are turned on, so. Everybody needs to get a scarab on their board, like immediately. All right, so that's how that is set. I have another bank set up. I'm gonna bank up uh, two of them. And I, this one I've called Snapshots. It's a nod to the Helix, because that's what I'm doing with it. So you can see here, clean, drive. If you have a Helix patch from us, this looks familiar. Clean, drive, drive plus, praise and worship bleed, ambient clean, 80s clean, swells. And then if you toggle the page, I've got more. Tremolo clean, ambient drive, 80s drive, using the micro pitch. Fuzz, ambient fuzz, and tremolo drive. So I have all those sounds like preset, and I can just hit them at the press of a button. So now, the MC8 and the ML5 are controlling this entire board, everything except the tuner, of course. Uh, the compressor and the golden are not in it. So these two, this is kind of an always on for me, but the golden, I would have to actually step on it uh, to make it do something, but it's the only one. So I'm gonna show you some of these sounds, but to do that, you have to turn these on. So these all need to be turned on. This is kind of how I use them. So remember, stage one, stage two, stage three, fuzz, right? So. Uh, and then I have these other sides of these two pedals available to me if I want just a little more in the moment. So we're gonna start, uh, you can, each of these has a tap tempo. So the tap is sent to the H9 the, and the DD500. We'll just go to the clean snap, or yeah, I'm gonna call it snapshot, clean snapshot. It's quarter note delay, and uh, I'm getting reverb from the golden. <laughs> Okay, the drive snapshot is gonna engage the king of tone, so we'll go from clean to drive. So that was sort of like the levels of gain, right? Clean, drive was this, drive plus is this. P and W lead is gonna kick on the dual delay and the big black hole, not the big black hole, but the black hole reverb. And that would be like, you know, the big, huge, wet, uh, you know, uh, lead sound. <laughs>
you heard there, uh, the, the ambient clean uh, was uh, the black hole and a dual delay, and then I kind of swapped between the big golden sound and the black hole, just to kind of, you know, change it up, give you an idea of the different reverb sounds available on this board. 80s clean kicks on that tri-chorus, which is my favorite of the chorus sounds, at least currently, in the H9. Uh, you know, you can play your, play your 80s favorites from here. <laughs> Better stop. Oh, okay, so 80s clean, and then swells is kind of the same thing that we had earlier. Uh, now here are some a little more interesting sounds that I wanted to play with. Tremolo clean isn't that interesting. It's just tremolo. Ambient drive is uh, just big, huge drive tone with uh, with. Uh, the black hole on it, so it's kind of like the Praise and Worship lead, just not quite as over the top. Now, 80s drive kicks on the micro pitch, so it's a little different. So you play your favorite 80s, you know. Man, so cool. All right, so uh, from there we go to the fuzz sounds. So the first one is just the scarab, like a basic. Last is the trim drive, which you can hear sort of pulsing in the back. Okay, so that wraps up like the way that I'm using the uh, MC8 on this thing. Uh oh, I went to board control and I have all the drives on. So, board control, that's the name. Uh, yeah, so it's really handy in that I can uh, just sort of like use the board and turn things on and off individually as I want, or I can go to preset sounds. The other thing you can do, like just like you could with the Helix with snapshots, you could build song presets inside the MC8 and control the whole board. That is my plan. Uh, I'm going to try a little bit of that for Sunday mornings. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to use this either into an amp or the quad cortex or axe effects, dual amps. Uh, this thing is meant to go stereo. Um, so I would need to be able to do that, but I can run it kind of into whatever an HX stomp right off the side, uh, would sound great. Would be a lot of fun. All in one package, easy to carry. That's the way I'm using the MC8. I've had a lot of questions since posting this board about the MC8. Uh, this versus like some of the stuff from RJM, which Bradford uses and loves. They're all great. Um, if you really like, if you really resonate with how I have this set up, uh, you got to get your head into like MIDI programming. It's a little different. And I had never really done it before, so I had to. I was calling Bradford, like, how do I do this? Uh, once I figured it out, it's very, very flexible and versatile. And Morningstar has a lot of really great resources available showing you how to do it. And uh, if you want to know more, I'll have a link to that other video uh, below when I get it uh, uploaded so you can see exactly how I set this thing up to do what it's doing. And you can control stuff like HX Stomp or Axe FX or FM3 with one of these. Very versatile with the ML5. You can put your drives in there as well. It's good stuff. <laughs>
about a few things about this board. Uh, well, the first thing is why. So uh, I mentioned earlier that for the last like five to seven years, maybe even longer, I've been an all-in-one modeling guy. So most of that tenure has been Helix, some with the HD500X, uh, a lot of it too with the Axe FX3, with the you know FC12. I love that approach. Um, basically the first time I really set up snapshots on the Helix and made song patches and like verse, chorus, you know, bridge, one button press, I fell in love with it. Um, and for me to put a board together, being able to do that was a big requirement, which is why the MC8 and the ML5 was such an attractive option for me for that. So um, the question is then why build this if, you know, Axe Effects is available to you. And you've heard Bradford and I say in videos before, it's like the modeling stuff. Pretty, you know, once you mic it, a guitar or an amp, and you listen back, it's kind of, you know, it's like really hard to tell the difference. Well, um, one of the reasons why is because pedals are fun. And it's okay to play the things that you like to play, the things that inspire you. So I used to have a pedal board, and I really, you know, like, I love the modeling approach. Um, and I'm not going to abandon that for sure, uh, but I like pedals too. So being able, and, and as we've been working with more and more companies, I've just really enjoyed, you know, using pedals again. So I wanted to put something together that I could use. Another reason that I wanted to do this is because um, what we do in the modeling world, the uh, being able to hear the and use the real world counterparts to what we dial in in the modeling world is really beneficial and it helps us make better patches. We realized that immediately when we started using amps again in the room to do Kemper profiles and stuff. So like, we, I've had that AC30 for a while and us making profiles and captures of that AC30 really helped us dial it in better in the Helix because we knew exactly what it was able to do and what we wanted to make it sound like. Uh, and the, the pedal stuff is exactly the same. The way we're setting up effects uh, is exactly the same thing. So to have real world counterparts to the digital stuff, and I, yes, I realize that this is all digital. <laughs> I get it. Like this whole part of the board is digital from here over. It's all modeling, uh, but it's a little different. So um, for us to be able to use these things helps us make better stuff in the Helix and that kind of thing. So if you haven't subscribed to WT Tone, please do that. There will be more content. We might take individual pieces from this. Like I definitely want to make a DD500 video. Many of you have asked for presets from the DD500, the patches. Uh, we're going to make those available because I really love the way that thing sounds. It's so cool. Um, so yeah, so those are the reasons why. Another thing about this board uh, is, man, that's expensive. Like, that's a lot of money tied into that thing. And that is true. And I want to make, and, and I've got another board in the works over here uh, with an HX stomp. I want to make like an HX stomp board that's not so crazy expensive like this. Something that uh, is attainable on more of a budget, but does like a lot of the same stuff. And it's going to sound really great and be a lot of fun to use. Uh, but like I said earlier, one of the goals with this board is to... Um, is to use the things that we're dialing in in the modelers to use them in the real world, like the King of Tone. It's in the heat. It's in like almost every Helix patch we have has this pedal in it. Uh, we want to know if that pedal sounds in that patch in the Helix sounds as good as this pedal through an amp. Uh, so for us to have the real world counterparts for that is very beneficial to us, um, and it is kind of what we do for a living, kind of what I do for a living. So. Um, I'm certainly not advocating that you go out and spend this much money on a board to play in church. I mean, if you have the means to do it and you want to do it, that's great. Um, I'm, you know, I will just say up front, I'm a big believer, like tithing is very important to me. Not going into debt is very important to me. I just wanted to talk about it for a brief moment here because I know that a lot of people are thinking about it when you see something like this, because I get it. It's not cheap. Um, but don't, don't, you know, don't neglect giving to your church and, and don't, uh, put yourself in a financial position that you shouldn't be in just to have like the latest and greatest or coolest or most expensive pedals on a pedal board when, you know, you can get a Helix that does pretty much the same thing. <laughs> So in 
conclusion, I just want to say thank you again to the companies that uh, have worked with me, worked with us here at Worship Tutorials, uh, to put this board together. Again, Creation, uh, Morningstar, Eventide, Universal Audio. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, you won't be seeing the last of this board here. Like, there's more to come. I'm happy to tell of just how awesome the pedals that these companies and the products that they make are. Like I said earlier, I sought them out um, because they were the, the, the products that I wanted to have uh, and the companies that I wanted to rep be represented on this board. And there are certainly, I mean, look, I'm wearing a Jet Pedals t-shirt. Obviously, love Jet Pedals too. So uh, there's gonna be some awesome Jet stuff on that other board. I will say too, I used this board this weekend. Uh, it was its maiden voyage in a worship service, and I used it with Quad Cortex, and I loved it. It sounds so good uh, in my ears, and I, I love the tone that I'm getting from it. I love the way it's it's working with the captures and the Quad Cortex. Of course, I've run it into amps here in the room in a stereo configuration quite a bit and dialing all these tones up, getting all the, the MIDI stuff set up. So it's just been a blast to play with a board again. And I know that modelers have sort of, you know, taken over in, in like on the forums, if you see that, but tons of you guys are still running boards or are running boards and uh, going into amps or you're going into HX Stomp and, and there's just so many really fun and interesting and inspiring ways to sort of build a rig these days. And uh, I've really enjoyed this. So subscribe for more. I know this was a long video. So if you're still with me, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to Worship Tutorials and to WT Tone. You're gonna be seeing more of this thing in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.